November 15th, that's the day we want you to mark on the ballots. That's the election day in the area of Delta, and we urge you to get out and vote. Very pleased to be joined by Jennifer Toss, who was one of the candidates running. Uh, Jennifer, first off, thanks for doing this. And Thank you It's for so nice me. to have you out here in the studio. Great. We want to get to know the lady behind the name. We see the banners all the time, vote for me because I'm a nice lady, which you are indeed. Yeah. But tell us a little more about it. Where did you grow up? Families, mom and dad, brothers and sisters? Sure. I'm a Twasson, Twasson girl, born and raised. I grew up on the border. So you'd open up our back gate and there was 20 feet of no man's land and <laughs> then Point Roberts. I've lived in North Delta and Ladner. Ladner the last three years on a horse farm. So I'm, I'm a Delta girl. You brothers and sisters? I do. I have four half siblings. So from my dad's previous marriages. Oh, that's just the way the world changes <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. I mean, we've all gone through that at one point in time, yeah. periodically anyway. Yeah. Uh, when you were a youngster growing up, uh, mom and dad, were they pushy parents or did they say, no, just go out and have fun uh, and enjoy I life? I would say pushy, but they definitely had me involved, especially my mother had me involved in every sport known to man. I took dance and skating and I was really involved with um, horseback riding, mm -hmm. equestrian sports. I did baseball, I did soccer, I did trampoline, you name it. Why did mom want you to get so involved in different sports? Well, I think she valued it. She came from a really sporty family, sporty background. She was a track star growing oh. up. So I think she wanted the same for me and I think she realized it builds character. Wow, track star, that, that's a sport unto itself. Yeah. What, what track did, what sport special did, did she specialize in? She was a 80 meter hurdles girl. So really? yeah, and uh, she tells me she held the Canadian record for a short time there. Well, and anytime you can hold a record like that, that yeah, that's good. What yeah. about dad, what did dad do? Well, Dad grew up in Germany, so he has a whole other story and not a lot of uh, sports in his background. Um, he, he actually escaped from East Germany when he was about 16, mm -hmm. so his story is a lot different. But yeah, no kidding, no kidding. You mentioned uh, you were involved in equestrian. Yep. Uh, what type of equestrian? Show jumping? Just I grew up with the Delta Riding Club, um, and so I spent a lot of time, I think 85, 86, I was their overall high point winner. So I did jumping, Western English, I went to the PNE, we did Thunderbird Stadium, we did... Uh, all of the, the tour, should we say? Yeah, no kidding. Well, Thunderbird Show Park, that, that's, that's an impressive right, yeah. place. If you can go out there and you could perform, and of course, yeah. George Tidball, the, uh, the owner, has since passed away, which is really sad, because uh, I know George, I actually worked with George for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, but George was great, he was very passionate. And yeah. that's a unique sport, because you look at where that sport's going now for equestrian show jumping and what Eric Lamaze is doing yeah. and where he's taken it. You look at the price, never mind the saddles, but you look at the yeah. price of the animal, the horse. Yeah, I know. That's not a cheap sport. No, no, it is not. And people don't make money riding. Very, very few people make money in equestrian sports or so as an equestrian. Do you still do any of the equestrian riding or no? Well, I just moved from a horse farm in Ladner back to um, Tuasen. Mm -hmm. So I was riding. I had a horse twice a week that I leased with my son. So I got him into riding. So tell and me he what, loved it. Yeah, well, that's that's a good sport. It's, yeah. it's a good career, I mean, for down the road when you look at it, too. Tell me what your son, what does he do? He plays as far as sports, mm -hmm. yeah. Or, or do you mean for a job? No. <laughs> yeah. Jobs down grade, the road. He's in grade three. He loves soccer. That's his sport. He was just, uh, just watched him play yesterday. With the election, unfortunately, I've missed a few of his games. So I was able to catch one yesterday, and he made a nice uh, goal to the upper right-hand corner, and he's quite proud of that. Well. Yeah, we caught him out a goal there for a game, which was good. Yeah, and no uh, he loves baseball. And I've just gotten him in, into fencing, which is really neat. That, what type of fencing? Is it using saber or what? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> why, why, okay. Why, <laughs> and I, I've dealt with the, the Dinamo Fencing Club out in Richmond for a okay. while too. But, but why fencing? That's, that's he, different. He wanted to. Yeah. And unfortunately, the, the didn't have enough enrollment for the summer session. So he, he took the fall session. And it's an introductory. So, right. um, you know, if they like it, they go on to the club, I suppose. And he really likes it. So The thing with, thing with fencing uh, along with equestrian is that, that's a sport that's sort of one of. You, you can do it like it's, it's you and the opposition. It's not you and like 18 or 20 extra people yeah. on the team. That's it's right. a single sport, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, but I think there's something to be said about team sports. A nice balance is good too, but yeah. I think fencing actually teaches a lot of discipline from mm -hmm. what I've seen at his um, practices there when no he's kidding. training. Yeah. So what type of parent uh, are you? Are you a pushy mom saying you have to do this and you you have to win? No, I, I, I don't no. suffer weakness very well. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't like it, you know, I, my finger hurts or, you know, come on, get out there. But, um, but sportsmanship is paramount to me. As long as he's trying his best and he's really putting his all out there and being a good team sport, that's what's Bottom important. Bottom line, you've got to have good coaches. You just basically, you have to have fun doing it, right? That's right. That's the key line. All right, now turning our attention to the election. Sure. First off, people say, okay, 
why do these people even run in <laughs> yeah. the protest? <laughs> of so course, what, that's what possessed you to get into the million politics? dollar question? Yeah, like why? Well, actually, my grandfather was a, a politician. Mm -hmm. He ran um, federally way back in the day in Matsqui. And so I grew up in a very politicized uh, household. Um, but my mom and father were very different with their politics. So I was um, kind of stuck in the middle listening a lot to the different politics. My, my mom would scrutineer for one side and my <laughs> father would scrutineer for the other. And um, so I grew up with a lot of dialogue around politics in my house and, and just inherently took a, an interest. And I think the time in my life now, I'm able to focus on that more. My son's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. um, I think Delta also is at a, a bit of a crossroads. They're changing. It's changing quite fast. And uh, this is the time I, I felt like to get in and with your parents uh, having a discussion about politics, what was the one key point that you took away from both of them? If you could put it into oh, one geez. word and summarize it, what would it be? From both of them? Yeah. Well, there wasn't a lot in common. In <laughs> but, uh, oh, geez, what? that's a tough question, Steve. Um, what would I have taken away from it? Um, well, I guess that there's two sides to every story mm -hmm. that, you know, that, uh, everybody has their own view and they really believe in it and uh, I think with politics it's really hard to change someone's political stripe if you will and I guess uh, it's almost bred into you what where you sit on the political spectrum I remember my mother always used to enforce it and she used to say look you have to go out and vote because yes. it's basically it, it's the only thing that's yes. free and if you don't vote you can't complain exactly and I remember the other extent for that is my dad used to talk about politics and try to help us kids and educate because because dad was in World War II yeah. and dad said it's so important that you have to understand for the betterment of not just your community but the country of Canada as yeah. a whole. It's your duty, but, right? Yeah, and, and dad, again, dad said it's free but I, I always remember the one thing my dad never did was he never told me who he ever voted for. Oh, he didn't? Never, never. I never, even to this day, and my dad's 86 right now, I do, still do not know who my father ever voted Interesting. for. Interesting. Yeah, some people take it like it's a very private thing for some people and I, I find that door knocking. Like people ask a lot of questions but at the end of the conversation, sometimes I still don't know if they're yeah, going to vote for me or they, they liked what I said, but... Tough read. Yeah, tough read. sometimes. Uh, tough read for, you know, trying to figure out what people want. What are some of the issues that you've uh, found people want addressed in Delta? Well, I tell you... Where do you start, I guess? That's yeah, where do you start? Right? And, uh, you know, I, I had the issues that I was sort of interested in, but like I say, through door knocking mm -hmm. and talking with people, my the spectrum of... Of understanding of all the issues of, of Delta has just exploded. There's so many issues in Delta, but I do hear, um, you know, people are disappointed. There wasn't um, someone taking on Lois Jackson. Mm -hmm. Not even, you know, I know she has a lot of support. She's very popular, but I think that that part of the the race they wanted to see, I think, and it's part of the process. So it's that was, I think, a bit disappointing for some constituents. But uh, I, I just hear from people they want to. I hear a lot about protecting the environment, concerns over port expansion, yes. concerns and, and interest about the, the tunnel. That's a, a big buzz word. That's huge. Yeah. yeah that, that. I mean, traffic in Delta. Where do you put it? Well, that's one of our because everybody yeah. in Surrey and Langley go through Delta to go over, you know, into New West yeah. or Richmond. So yeah. where, where do you put the traffic? Well, that's it. And and I don't know that the bridge is the answer. Mm -hmm. If we have five lanes, and I think that's where the proposal sits right now is five lanes in either direction and that doesn't make sense to me. There's a lot of um, things about it that don't make sense. How does five lanes go into two lanes and not bottleneck farther up at the Oak Street Bridge? Yeah, that's, that's true. Or the Steveston on-ramp yeah. and then um, as well with how high the bridge will have to be to get the ships underneath. Mm -hmm. The And I think it's, a, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a 7% grade that's going to be kilometers in either direction yes. that to, to actually get that high and then of course the dredging underneath is a, a not necessarily an environmental concern so much as that's the reason that we're doing this. So I'm, I'm a little concerned that that's maybe not the direction that we need to go to alleviate traffic. I see no. other solutions. I think I think there's a lot of concern, a lot of validity in that because even in North Delta, for example, you look at they're building the high, the, the what yep, they call the rise, rise yeah. at 80th and Scott Road now. Yeah. One of the biggest things, and I've had the chance of going through that with the Chamber of Commerce. I saw it as and, well. And, and I like the plans and all that, but one of my big questions is where do you put the traffic? Right. Like, I mean, that's not a huge intersection to start yeah. with, but I mean, there's a medical building there. It's going to be a nice location, yeah. but where do you put everybody? And, and I think heavy traffic is yeah. actually de detracts from quality of life. I, I find that that's one of the major concerns I hear on the doorstep as well, you know. No kidding. People right. are with us being very passionate about promoting sports and all that, yeah. you look at the sporting facilities that we have and your sure. son playing soccer. Uh, do we have enough sporting facilities? And if we don't, what could we do and where do we put more? 
Well, geez, that's another tough question. And again, as a, a newbie, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have all the information about what are all the city properties that are owned right now and what what's lacking, or I don't get the feedback necessarily from um, all the sports organizations. Right. I was on the Parks and Recs uh, Commission back in 2006, I think, but things have changed a lot since then. Um, at that point, they were um, proposing the the um, library be moved oh, to yes. okay. uh, Winskill there. Um, I'm not really sure where the expansions would have to take place, but I have a deep um, seated belief that sports need to be really well funded. So I, I think whatever needs to be done would be looked into, and, and I can't really tell you more than that right now. Yeah, one of the issues that we have in Delta, and, and it's not just unique to Delta, it, it's a variety of different areas, regardless of where you go, not just in Canada, but yeah. in the world in general. You've got a lot of single families. Sure. And uh, just sort of the way of life now, I guess, but the, the tough part that I see is you'll see a mom or a dad yeah. with three young children that want to play sports, yeah. and financially they can't afford it. If we wanted to get involved how could Delta maybe like help the families to get their kids in sports and off the street? Because if they're on the street, chances Agreed. are they might get in trouble, and then Mr. Sessford and his crew might have a little more problems to deal with. That's right. No, sports are definitely, yeah. a, like, I mean, that really helped me growing up, having the riding and, and being able to get to the barn every day and having to clean a stall. That, I think, kept me out of a lot of trouble growing up. Um, how do we how do we get a family that can't afford it? Um, I, there are grants available, mm -hmm. and I know it's sometimes a bit of work to go through the the red tape, but that's definitely one avenue to, to fund. Um, the municipality has, a, I think, a very good leisure program um, at the moment. Mm -hmm. like a very wide variety of different things available for kids to try, not just sports, but everything from pottery to Lego building yes. to you name it. And um, that's that's a great program that they're putting out there. Um, I think we just have to make sure that those opportunities exist. We could have, you know, city-sponsored, public, whatever it is, soccer, baseball, yeah. get, um, you know, public figures maybe out there, just role models in our community playing the sport, getting the kids out. There's lots of ideas. I mean, we can... Love, and, and a lot of different ideas, but too short a time for us to talk about all yeah, of them now. We, we, can, can, we can be here for days to talk about different issues. I should be asking things. you what we should be doing, right? <laughs> I, I get a lot of ideas. Sometimes it's like talking to a wall, but <laughs> you know, I, I just want to see the kids play sport and I just yeah. want to see them. I just want to see them have fun. I want to see so them grow up in a healthy yeah. environment. I want to see the coaches be coaches yeah. and not coaches that are tyrants and saying you have to win at all costs. Oh, I know. Don't, I get frustrated when I see parents try and live their dream through their kid. Yes. Like, don't do that. Let the kids be kids and yes. grow up and just be normal yes, and I enjoy agree. it. Like, you only go around this world once. Yeah. You don't get a second chance at it. I'm sorry. It yeah. just doesn't work. I want you to do me a favor and look in your camera, which will be that one over there. Okay. And tell people in Delta why they should vote for you for the upcoming election. Well, I think you should vote for Jennifer Thoss and our Delta Connect team. We need fresh faces on Delta Council. I'm fair, I'm intelligent, and I'm really willing to work hard. So, vote for Jennifer Thoss and Delta Connect. All right, Jennifer, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming in. Thanks. Good Thank luck you, in the Steve. upcoming election. Thank you, Steve. It's been really nice uh, chatting uh, with you. Yeah, it's fun. And, uh, of course, it's always nice to learn different things about different candidates. And that's what our role and myself and Carl are looking at doing down the road. Great. So. Well, I appreciate it. Okay. Well, good luck in the election on the Thank November you so 15th. Much. Thank you. Great. Don't forget, November 15th, we urge you again, please make sure to go out and vote November the 15th right there in Delta.